I've only been gone two weeks and then shit like this happens. I have no intention of recording another video for a long time whilst I was whilst I'm still working on my uh, final year project for university. I, I have no intention but this pissed me off to no end and it can't be it, it can't be explained or my feelings towards this can't be explained with just like a simple Twitter thread. Uh, you know, just like saying why this is I, I need to be personal about this because it feels personal to me. It has personally pissed me the fuck off. I'm not entirely sure about the full details about where this image in particular uh, came about, but it had something to do with a lawsuit uh, involving Mattel and they gave their reasons for not being inclusive towards uh, people with autism at a Thomas Day attraction, a Thomas Land attraction. Furthermore, in connection with the railway's proposed marketing initiative, I'm guessing it was the railway that was holding the Thomas Land thing, it's recommended to Mattel that it make broader efforts to welcome members of the autism community to Thomas Land by dedicating an annual day at Thomas Land catering to the autism community. To that end, railway proposed marketing Thomas Land more sensitive friendly such events, such as uh, reducing sounds, creating quiet rooms with activities, providing headphones to block out train noise, etc. Mattel's representatives resisted railway's promotional efforts in this regard, with Mattel representatives stating on one occasion, in some or substance, that Mattel doesn't want to get involved with that i.e. that it would not be in the best interest of Mattel or the Thomas & Friends brand to be associated with the autism community. The same Mattel representative insisted that all marketing promotion done by Railway for any such autism event be designed to warn other customers coming to the park and or Thomas Land that they may have a different experience due to the autism event. Due to Mizell's resistance and lack of support, Railway did not implement any sensory-friendly days for the autistic community at Thomas Land. <sighs> you can see why this feels fucking personal to me. Mattel are personally to blame for this. I'm so do not in any power that you have try to harass anybody involved with uh, the show as it is like nowadays. I'm, I did, don't harass anybody in general, but what I'm specifically saying is don't go after any of the voices involved in that show, or the writers, or the animators, anybody involved in sort of like the production of it. That is not the fault. This is entirely a Mattel-based problem. It's that line of not in their it's that line of not in their best interest. Not in their best interest to be welcoming to the autism community and you know personally looking out for them. The reason why it rubs me the wrong way in the first place is because Thomas and Friends has such a huge connection to people with autism that maybe it wasn't like the intention, you know, like at the start, and the intention at the beginning was just to adapt a TV series based off of a popular book series that Britt Allcroft had fallen in love with. That was the, I guess, like the intention of the show, but Regardless if it was the intention or not, the show became loved by members of the autism community or just like kids with autism in general. It became a favourite of theirs. It became a safe space for them, but, you know, whether it was intentional or not. And you know what they did? They ran with it. They allowed, you know, people with autism to share their appreciation for this. And in, and in doing that, they, you know, to sort of like let it, to sort of let it be, saying, you know what, people with autism love this show, and we're going to appeal it to them. We're going to continue appealing it to them. You know, maybe, you know, maybe there were some changes, you know, after the original company left, but it was all. You could always feel that it was their best interest to keep it, you know, associated with the autism community because that 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 was the audience. That was part of the audience it connected with. It wasn't the entire audience, you know, connected to it, but it was large enough that you could you could feel the presence in the audience of fans that talked about it and that was because of the show's very laid-back and relaxing synthetic score the beautifully handcrafted uh, models there was, and there was and there was always a sense of you could always directly tell what uh, what a character was feeling, you know, by you know by their faces, they were, you know, they were. I mean, yeah, partly part of it is because it is a kids show, but 
You could, but, but their facial expressions and their dialogue were very blunt. It was very easy to understand how they were feeling. And one of the biggest things about that show that, you know, other shows of that time didn't do, and even some to this day don't even do, was that it was very relaxing. It was very restrained. It didn't need to have high octane energy into it because that was never the intention of the original books. The, the books were written as bedtime stories. They just became something bigger as Wilbert continued to write them and the show ran with what was established in those books, mostly, and it became appealing to people with autism who were just overcome with, you know, in a world that is so full of sensory overload and all this noise and chaos that's, that, that, that makes them go into a panic meltdown. It appealed to them and gave them a safe space that let them knew. It, it, it let me knew. It let people like me know everything was going to be okay. Everything could be quiet because we are here to help you. That was a huge part of Thomas and Friends. And to hear that the companies that have taken the brand, it's been about 10 years, you know, since they bought this off of Hit Entertainment. And to hear that representatives have taken a show that is near and dear to the autism community and decided we're not going to look out for those people anymore because it's not in our best interest and we do not want to get involved with it is fucking disgusting. It really paints a perfect picture of what their true intentions were from the start when they bought this franchise all the way back in 2011, 2012, like, like around then. It really paints a clear picture of what their true intentions were. Their intentions were to do the bare minimum to win back fans because of, you know, uh, like the crap that we had to, well, that, that many had to suffer through with, you know, what Entertainment, you know, did. I'm not saying Hit Entertainment did, you know, a, a completely terrible job. You know, they did, they, they did some things right, but it was clear that the series was starting to suffer a little bit with the switch to CGI. Mattel took that, did the bare minimum to win back the audience, rested on their laurels, and, compl and did a complete 180 when a vast majority of the fans had come back and just completely, you know, distanced themselves from them. They, they alienated them in their attempts to rebrand the series into something that just felt way too different. And then when that wasn't working, they changed it to something even more different. And what were they doing that for other than to make a quick cash. There were passionate people involved with their production to begin with who wanted the show to succeed, who wanted to bring back their audience. Andrew Brenner, Michael White, much later on in the, you know, when they did the Big World Big Adventures thing, they were people that knew what worked and what didn't work with Thomas and Friends and took the initiative to include that in the show. It, it wasn't to Mattel's interest, you know, they could do whatever they wanted so long as it, you know, meant that the show was coming out in the first place and when the show began to suffer because Mattel weren't marketing it properly, they thought, hmm, this isn't working, let's do something completely fucking different. I feel so blessed and so grateful that I had, uh, you know, the classic era of the show to grew up with, a series that appealed to my uh, mental problems and the challenges that I faced with growing up with my autism and having to go to a primary school that knew next to nothing about how to deal with it and treated me like an outcast. <laughs> so as, as, and I, I, I had Thomas and Friends, the, the show, the classic era, to hold on to. I, I, I had that as my, I had that as my safe space to keep me going. And, and, and it did, and it did keep me going. It got me to, is, is it got me into a point in my life where I got better help for coping with my autism. And it got me to, I, I, I don't know, feel some sense of normality. It, 
it allowed me to get to a point in my life where I feel like I can fit in with you know just, just sort of every, sort of everyday people like I can go out of their house and sort of like walk about and just not be filled with, filled with overwhelming stress towards small changes to my daily routine loud noises or, 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 or anything else that my autism couldn't cope with I owe a lot of that to the show I also I also owe it to a lot of you know uh, my family and friends who stuck by me all that time, I, I, absolutely. But but Thomas is such a big part of it, and it really saddens me to know that people, well, kids, as well, kids and people with similar problems that I faced and sometimes still face nowadays won't get that. Because Thomas and Friends now is just too different to a point where its own company doesn't want to be associated with a vast majority of its fandom. It's isolating them. It's making them feel like they're inadequate. Like they don't matter. They do matter. You, you do matter. You watch this show. You, uh, uh, you enjoy it. It appeals to you. You fucking matter. No matter what this company tells you. And it's got me thinking, are we now at a point where the franchise has to be handed over to a company that does understand what Thomas and Friends is about? And it's, it, it is like how to like pinpoint that down because different companies will have different ideas on how to present this show. But if they're given a clear understanding as to why the show has the fandom it has and why so many people with autism are connected to it, if it can understand that, I think they can do a better job than what Mattel is doing right now. I don't want to say that I've completely lost faith in them. I'm, I'm, hope, as I, I'm holding on to that little shred of hope that something good can come, that, that there's something good can come out of them. But they're not doing well to convince me. They're really not doing well. That, then they are. They're not doing well to show that they have an understanding of what this show, of how how this show appeals to people. Mattel, if you think that this is the way to treat your audience involved with this franchise, if you think that this is the way to brand the franchise of such a long-lasting history, such a widely loved source material, and such a passionate fandom, if you think this is the way to brand it with all that, then either give this brand, give this franchise to a company that will understand it or make a change to show that you understand. What else have you got to fucking lose at this point? I mean, you've shown to us over the past 10 years that you can revitalize a series that had been, you know, suffering, uh, you know, to, uh, towards, uh, you know, a massive switch into CGI. You've shown that you can bring a show back into the limelight and then do a complete 180 and completely change the outlook on it. If you can do shit like that, then I hope that you can understand what Thomas and Friends means. I, I want to believe that you are better than this. And all you've got to do is show me, show us. See you in a bit.